the FBI in peace and war. Another great story based on Frederick L. Collins' copyrighted book, The FBI in Peace and War. Drama, thrills, action. Tonight's story, The Windfall. Martin Granger, good morning. Just one moment, please. I'll connect you with the legal department. Uh, yes, Miss. Hello. Is this Martin? Well, yes, he is, but he's busy right now. And if you've come about that new position it's taken, I'm sorry. Well, it's not about any new position. Just tell Mr. Marsh this is a personal call, will you? Personal? Mm. Oh, uh, Mr. Marsh, this young lady... Uh, Miss Carla, I hope he's ready to go right away. Uh, yes, sir, I'll take care of it. Uh, this young lady isn't here about the new position, Mr. Marsh. Mm? It's a personal call, she says. Oh, you want to see me, Miss? Yeah, is there some place we can talk private? Well, I'm very busy at the moment. If you could tell my secretary... Uh... Oh, we'd better make it private. Mr. Marsh, it's about the Alexander Nevin Construction Company. Uh, I'm afraid I don't understand. Well? The Alexander Nevin Construction Company? Mm-hmm. You must have read about it in the papers. Well, uh... The government's investigating the company's past activities, and Mr. Nevin himself is being questioned by the Senate Banking Committee. Well, of course I read about that, but... Look, uh... Mr. Marsh, it wouldn't be so nice if somebody was to inform the government that a former state housing official had accepted a $50,000 fee from Nevin Construction. Maybe we'd better go into my private office. It's uh, more comfortable than standing here. Certainly, Mr. Marsh. After you. Now, who are you and what do you want? My name's Liggett, Francis Liggett. I was Mr. Nevin's secretary before all this scandal broke. I want $1,000 in cash. You have till noon to get it, and I'll give you my address where to have it delivered. What? I need $1,000, Mr. Marsh, until... Well, until I find a new job, anyway. $1,000? Mm-hmm. That should only be a drop in the bucket to a man like you. Besides that $50,000 fee, you also... That's a lie. I never... Mr. Marsh. Please, who are we kidding? Everything I'm saying is written down in a little black book of Mr. Nevins that I managed to keep anybody else from finding. But I, I, I tell you... Here's the address where to deliver the money. Thousand dollars cash. And, Mr. Marsh, if the money isn't there by, say, one o'clock today, the government will get a real juicy piece of information by, say, one o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> During the early post-war years, millions of dollars were made in so-called windfall profits on housing projects financed on government-insured loans. The windfalls resulted from the fact that the mortgage loans were in excess of cost, and rents were scaled to the loan and not to the cost. Although most contractors acted with complete propriety and within the legal frame, an inquiry was begun into certain alleged frauds and into various fees paid out by individuals representing specific firms. And Alexander Nevin, having completed his second day of testifying, was ordered to produce books. And his attorney asked for a recess of one week in order to enable him to... You're just making yourself sick reading that stuff. Well, they'll they'll never get anything out of Alex Nevin. Never. He's too smart for them. Joe. Well, you wait and see, Ed. He'll make him look like monkeys. With a smart lawyer like Owen Shaver to advise him. Joe, don't talk like a fool. This isn't small-time stuff. This is the federal government. All right. So it is federal. They're no different from anyone else. I've been around Washington, haven't I? Sit down, Joe. Don't get excited. Well, what's so, so different? Will you tell me? I don't know. Let's not hash it over anymore today. we we better get back to work. Alex won't name me. He, he, he wouldn't say anything about me. You don't think he'd name me, do you? I don't know, Joe. Look at the end of me. Everything I've worked for. Couldn't take it. Isn't it a little late for spilt milk? What? I warned you at the time not to play ball with Nevin. Ed, you knew what you were getting into. Sure I did. So a lot of other guys. I wasn't the only one. I didn't say you were. Everybody else was on the gravy train. What was wrong with me getting mine? Listen, I could name some bigger names than mine on this stage. Oh, no, we've it... been over this before. Yeah. Well, I don't remember you turning down the money that I put in the firm. I don't remember you minding the new business it brought in. Ed. I'm going back to my office, Joe. Uh, not yet. Uh, stay, stay for just a minute. Hello, What am I going to do, Ed? What am I going to do if he names me? I've already told you what I thought you should do. But I can't. They, they throw the book at me. You know that. They might anyway. But if you go to the FBI and tell them the full story... I couldn't have. Not only for me, but you think... What would happen to the office? I have thought of that. And I'd still rather. Oh, I'm sure I get it. I just couldn't do it. 
I'll get out of this some way. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Yes? I have a call for Mr. Marsh, Mr. Prentice. Is he with you? Yes, he is, Miss Howard. Just a moment. Call for you, Joe. Huh? You want to take it? Yeah, yeah. All right. Hello? Uh, one second, Mr. Marsh. Go ahead, please. Hello, Mr. Marsh. This is the young lady we're going to see about some money. I'm sure you remember me all right. Yes. Yes, I certainly do. Do you remember the address you sent the money to? What about it? Oh, this about it, Mr. Marsh. There's a bar right downstairs at that address. I want you to meet me there tonight, 9 o'clock. What? I can't do that. I want to talk to you, Mr. Marsh. You meet me at 9, like I said. I'll be waiting. <laughs> in the spring. The cardinal whistling joyously as he builds his nest in the bush. Or Cairo in the fall, when the temperature has dropped below scorching. Faraway places, the strange-sounding name. Nope, I'm speaking of Illinois, the land of Lincoln. Oddly enough, though, Illinois is sometimes referred to as Egypt because the fertility of the soil in and around Cairo, or Cairo, giving it the Illinois pronunciation, resembles that of its Egyptian namesake. But there, the similarity ends. Riding the Rock Island line is considerably more comfortable than riding a camel. And the IGA stores, the lonely grain elevators, the oak groves, the signs saying Edna's Cafe and Clabber Girl and Chew Mail Park are familiar to us in a way the pyramids could never be. Oh, not that Illinois is lacking in the exotic. Chicago is testimony to that. But Illinois, home not only of Lincoln but of Grant and Clarence Darrow and Carl Sandburg and Ziegfeld and Montgomery Ward and Allen, the original Pinkerton man, is home to us all. So reflective is it of our great nation. Celebrated in word and song, Illinois is indeed a sovereign state. Mr. Nevin. Yes? There are two gentlemen here to see you, sir. From the FBI. So, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Oh, either one of you care for a cigar? No, thanks. You either, Mr. Reynolds? No? <laughs> you, uh, you don't mind if I do? Go right ahead. Thank you. <sighs> you know, nothing like a comforting smoke when you're being grilled by the FBI. That's not a friendly word, Mr. Nevin, grilled. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know this call was social. It isn't, but you're not obligated to answer anything you don't want to. Well, why shouldn't I answer? My life is an open book. Uh-huh. You're in a bad spot, Mr. Nevin. Who are you kidding? You know it as well as we do. No, I don't know it. If I'm in a bad spot, why are you fellows over here fishing around? We're just curious, that's all. A week's a lot of time to gather your books. We're just wondering if they're going to prove as open as you claim your life is. Well, why shouldn't they be? I run a legitimate business. I always have. So I make money, a lot of money. What's wrong about that? Not a thing. So long as you make it within the law. I've got more brains than the next guy, that's all. And more connections. Look, Mr. Stevens, you're wasting your time and mine. Maybe, Mr. Nevin, maybe not. We're also wondering about your past relations with a former state housing administration officer. I don't have relations with state officials, past or present. I wouldn't even know their names if you mentioned them. How about the name Joseph Marsh? He was head man around the time you secured your company loan. Was he? I wouldn't know. You can make things easier all around if you cooperate with us. Easier for you gentlemen or for me? You know what we mean. I'm not sure I do. Mr. Nevin, you recognize this check? Where did you get that? It's for $50,000, made out to cash. You want to look at the date? Where did you get that check? Does it matter? We got it. One day after the 50000 was drawn, a deposit of the same amount was made at the Second National Bank in the name of John Morris. John Morris. J.M. Now, that couldn't be a fictitious name for Joseph Marsh, could it, Mr. Nevin? Gentlemen, I'm going to give you a free piece of advice. The state's attorney tried to pin something on me a couple of years back. He got nowhere fast. Now the government signed the same act and they'll end up the same place. Nowhere. Mm-hmm. You've got friends in high places. Is that the idea? Maybe. I've got friends. I've got money. I've got a lawyer who knows his way around the committee room. That's a pretty tough combination to crack. <laughs> Daddy. 
I like sweet music with my beer. Have a drink for you, Joe? No. You don't mind if I call you Joe, do you? Mr. Marsh, it seems so formal. <laughs> okay, if I help myself on your cigarette? Look, what did you get me over here for? Uh, if it's more money... Is years work? Yes. If it's more money... It's money and a lot more. You and I are making a deal, Joe. You better have another drink. Get braced for it. I gave you a thousand dollars. What more do you want? Right now, another beer. Wait a another beer. I'm not made of money, you know. I know. But you're made of lots of other things I like. You've got class, flex, you know, a lot of nice people. Now, look. I brought an envelope along with me. There's $1,500 in this envelope. I'm going to give it to you, but not one more cent. When I walk out of this place tonight, I never want to see or hear from you again. Oh, that's too bad. I got other ideas. I'll forget them. Uh-uh. You forget yours. <laughs> I got you behind the eight ball, Joe. Or have you forgotten? How much do you want? Mm, we'll come to that in a minute. You're not married, are you? What? Your wife died five years ago, didn't she? What about it? Bad for a man to live alone, Joe. Nothing like a woman around the house to keep a man happy. It's nice to know your opinion, but I'll worry about my private life. Thank oh, you. no, Joe. From now on, you can relax. It's my worry. Huh? Mrs. Joseph Small. That sounds real nice. I'll be a good wife to you, Joe. You? You what? Be a good wife. Always wanted to settle down, but no guy I knew ever had a quarter. When you worked all your life like me. Are you out of your mind? Uh-uh. I'm smart. The way you live is something I've wanted since I was old enough to know mink from rabbit. You really think I'd marry you? I don't think I know you well. Of all the crazy ideas I've ever oh, heard. Crazy or not, you're going to go through with it. Maybe I'm no Marilyn Monroe, but I'm better than a ten-year stretch any day. And a wife can't be forced to testify against her husband, don't forget that. He'll marry me, Joe. You will. <laughs> Mr. Shaver, the name is Marsh, Joseph Marsh. Tell him it's important. Well, there we are, Joe. The bishop has the king in check. Two moves, a possible three, and the game would be over. Oh, and for the love of Pete, will you stop toying with that and listen? Toying? You don't know chess, my friend. Oh, and... Go on, go on, I'm listening. Well, I asked you a question. What's your answer? What's yours, or better, what was yours to the lady? You want a quote? If it will stop you from wearing a hole in the carpet. My answer was that I wouldn't marry her if she was the last woman on earth. That's our Joe, always the diplomat. Well, what did you expect me to say? Just what you did. Of course, almost anybody else would have said, give me a little time, let me think it over. Well, I... I did say that, too. She wouldn't take no for an answer, and I... I wanted to stall her until I saw you. Uh-huh. Oh, Joe, well, which one of the secretaries was she? The brunette with a cute nose. No, no. This girl's bleach blonde with a kind of broad, square face. Francis Liggett. Liggett. Yeah, sort of washed out looking. Homely. And she wants to marry you and live the high life. Oh, and how long did she give you to think it over, Joe? Tomorrow. Friday, the latest. Oh, and you don't by any chance plan to go through with it. <laughs> you should have been a comic, not a lawyer. I'm just asking. Well, we'll just have to get that little black book from the young lady, Joe. Huh? Without that book, she can't do much damage. Yeah. That's right. I'd be in the clear. Mm-hmm. But I'm not only thinking of you. No? No, it's my considered opinion that such a book in such obviously wrong hands could become very dangerous, even disastrous. There are a lot of other names in the book besides Joe Marsh. What? What if she doesn't have it with her? What? Well, I mean, if, what if you search her apartment and... talking can... about me? You don't think I'd do the job myself. Well, uh, one thing about being in this business, Joe, one has connections. Uh, Miss Dawes, get Rudy Calman for me. Uh, let me know when he's on. By tomorrow morning, the little book will be in our hands, Joe. Yeah? Guarantee he goes with it. All it takes is sound manipulation. Well, I still say, what if she doesn't have it around? Uh, that's right. You don't play chess. What? It's a great teacher, Joe. One can learn the very move that might save his neck. Why don't you talk so somebody can understand? All right, here it is, so you can understand. Rudy's brain isn't as big as his body, but it's absolutely one track. I've known him to beat a man senseless just because the poor staff held out on a small numbers payment. Now, if the book shouldn't be in Miss Liggett's apartment... Oh. Well, but... Well, does he have to... Don't be creamish. You can't afford that luxury. You've been on the polite side of the fence so long, you've forgotten how the strings get pulled. Manipulation, Joe. Exactly like Jack.
Hawaii was a state of mind long before it became a state of the Union. A let's get away from it all place where soft-spoken maidens soothe the fevered brow with lovely hula hands and muscular young men rode surfboards. Today, annexation has changed our image of the island, but it hasn't changed the island. Cowboys ride the range just as they do in the southwest. But at Hawaii's Parker Ranch, they're Paniolas, and their stetsons are ringed with lays. Historical landmarks dot the landscape just as along Route 66, but they're somehow more unique. Molokai's primitive Kaakuloa village and sacred grove of kuki trees. The site on Kauai of Captain Cook's first island landing and Hawaii's first sugar mill. This paradise of the Pacific is, is almost too good to be true, with its black sand beaches and golden waterfalls, flowers vibrant with real living color. Yes, Hawaii alone among our states combines modern cosmopolitan living with South Sea Island lolling, offering the best of both worlds. The real one, where we work and buy insurance and rear children, and the dream world, where life goes on without a care. Stephen speaking. Hey, this is Reynolds. I'm in a cigar store across from Owen Shaver's office. The building cowman just left the building. Douglas and Mills are following. Keep your line clear. I'll be in touch. Go ahead, Dave. I'm calling from a drugstore on 3rd Street on Avenue L. Rudy Calvin just entered a walk-up over a bar. And listen to this. One of the walk-up tenants is Francis Liggett, Nevin's former secretary. You better get over here fast. Okay. Douglas, you cover the rear entrance. Mills will cover the front. Dave, you stay here in the car with Rudy Kalman. Give me ten minutes in Marsh's office. If I don't come out by then, come in and see why. Yes? Mr. Rudy Kalman is here, sir. Oh, uh, all uh, right, Miss Howe. Will you go in, please? Yeah, sure, thanks. Come on in, Kalman. You are... Uh... Marsh, have a chair. Help yourself this one. Okay. Normally I can't stay long. I'll just take my dough and get out. You'll get your money just as soon as I get the black book. This, you got it? What does it look like? Let me see that. Uh, not so fast. I said you'd get your money. So? There, that envelope on the desk. Ah. Uh-huh. Two Gs. Well, why don't you count it? Well, maybe you can't count. I'll take your word. And I'll take that little black book now, thanks. It's all yours, mister. The right one? Yeah. This is it, all right. Well, what about the girl? Was she home? She was home. She gave you trouble? Nobody gives me trouble. She gave you plenty, though, huh? Enough. Yeah, she had you over a barrel, all right? Perhaps, perhaps not. No, perhaps she had you. She told me. What? What do you mean she told you? About that bribe you got from that Nevin character. It's all in that book. That little floozy would talk. I should have known. Oh, she spilled plenty before she passed out. She even knew about some other deals you were... All right, all right. You won't pay for that. Just see you keep your mouth shut, that's all. Hey, take it easy. I don't like guys talking to me that way. I don't like guys who knows about other people's business. Mr. Shaver is here now, sir. Go right in, please. Thank you. Hello, Joe. I hear Rudy beat me to it. I didn't think he'd get here so far. Yeah, yeah, he got here. And he's on his way out. Well, don't let him go yet. There's a paper I want him to sign. Uh... Where's Rudy? Oh, right there in that chair. What's the matter, kid? Who are you, anyway? Oh, no. Shut up, Joe. This isn't Rudy Kalman. What? I'm afraid the man's right, Marsh. I'm not Rudy Kalman. My name is Stevens, Federal Bureau of Investigation. What? What? You idiot, Joe. You stupid idiot. How was I to know? It hardly matters now. You're both coming with me. Where? Where? A man in your position, Shaver, certainly shouldn't... Marsh, I wouldn't try that if I were you. We're not going with you. You stay where you are. Marsh. I mean it. Make one move and it'll be your last. Owen and I are going through that door and nobody's stopping us. So... Come on, Owen. They never put us behind bars. I've carried this gun around ever since that ligand creature first spoke to me. You won't get out that door, Marsh. Don't try to stop me. I'm warning you. No. Come on, Owen. I'll get you out of this. Open up the door. Open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. Drop the gun, Joe. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. It's okay, Dave. With an assist from Mr. Shaver, everything is fine. Uh-huh. Okay, Mills. Take a look at Marsh's arm, though. He's got quite a workout. Right. Oh, um, Yes? What did you stop me for? What was the idea? The idea was common sense, Joe. You were making a bonehead play. 
Any chess player could tell you that. All right, both of you. Let's go. On the advice of his counsel, Joseph Marsh became a witness for the government, exposing the whole corrupt story of the Alexander Nevin operation. Francis Liggett reluctantly corroborated his testimony. The investigating committee made recommendations which a grand jury accepted, quickly indicting Nevin, Owen Shaver, and Joseph Marsh himself. In a subsequent trial, all three were convicted. Nevins and Shaver receiving terms of ten years each, Marsh the lesser term of six years. With these convictions, our files were closed on the windfall. United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.